Okay. So, well, it's so this uh, explain it's a easily zip code, but it's in Anderson County, but it is part of the Pottersville community. Okay. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Part of the. Yep. Pottersville. Pottersville. What's that? Well, yeah, but easy, but but the uh, easily city limits are within Pickens County. So, yeah. Good, good. Okay. All right. Well, I'm ready when y'all are. Okay. So I'll I'll tell you what I do know, and then if you have a few questions, I'll try try to take a few. But uh, about 12:40 this this afternoon, just after lunchtime. Our deputies responded to a well-being check here on Circle Road in Easley, which is actually in the Pattersville community. Uh, deputies got on scene. Apparently, there was an argument between two roommates, um, they, which after the roommate called back, it turned into a um, um, potential suicidal type call. Uh, and so our deputies got out. They uh, talked to the subject in question that the roommate had called about. He had a gun. Uh, on him they saw the gun uh, they tried to talk to him and uh, basically situation got a little tense from there he actually went back inside the house barricaded himself in at this point with the roommate uh, and, and believed to have a hostage type situation going on uh, we had more deputies respond to the area started setting up a perimeter around the home and uh, all while trying to communicate with this guy and just diffuse the situation the best that we could. Uh, he comes back out. Uh, as the deputies were setting up a perimeter around the house, he, he comes back out. This time he's waving a, a gun. Actually, at one point he fires off a shot. Uh, at that time, I believe he goes back in the house, then comes back out as the deputies are setting the perimeter and actually uh, tries to chase a couple of the deputies on the perimeter and, uh, and our deputies had to engage him, but they did everything they possibly could up until about the last possible second before uh, it could, was potentially life or death for one of our folks. So that's where we are. The, the uh, condition of the suspect is unknown at this point to me. I know that EMS uh, transported him to, uh, I believe, Greenville Hospital, I'm, I would assume, since that's the closest. Uh, so we'll, the condition unknown right now on the suspect. No deputies were hurt, thank God. I do not. And plus, you know, obviously SLED's here, called SLED to uh, work uh, this as a, uh, for, as a third party investigation. And of course, uh, I can't get into a whole lot of specifics. I actually don't know the answer to that question anyway, but uh, they are, of course, taking over the investigation for us um, and uh, we'll be turning over everything in its entirety to them. Yes, sir. So all the deputies that I spoke to, of course, I checked on all the ones that were here and that uh, that had to engage, and also the ones that saw the engagement, uh, just to check on them, make sure they're okay. Uh, this is not something that uh, you know they see every day. Unfortunately, it's becoming more and more common everywhere. Uh, but this is one of those situations where. Uh, you know, it's tough. It's, it's tough to see anybody shot, of course, and uh, so they they basically reiterated the situation where they were doing everything they possibly could. They don't know what more they could have done trying to talk uh, this guy down, trying to uh, get him to cooperate, and trying to defuse the situation the best they could. And uh, actually, a, a neighbor up here that I know actually texted me and said, you know, your your guys went above and beyond just trying to hold out as long as they possibly could but he was definitely a threat to himself and everybody else uh, and, his, and his roommate and uh, so he was actually applauding uh, and he eyewitnessed the situation and applauded our deputies uh, response and reactions and and so uh, you know that's the last thing we ever want to do is have to uh, shoot someone engage like that and you know we wish people would just uh, cooperate and uh, you know unfortunately these things happen though but you start waving the gun at uh, law enforcement or, or other people, because there were other people out here too. You know, you start um, waving a weapon at somebody like that. You know, and you and you're, you're forcing law enforcement into a corner where they have to do it, 
what they have to do, period. What about the roommates? What is, what he shot at, at any, or what is he committed? Uh, his condition, as far as I know, is, is okay, so I don't think, uh, you know, there was um, a lot of back and forth between them, but as far as I know, he's he is okay, but he's certainly could have been. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was the one that actually called us anyway. Was there any mental illness with the man who shot I couldn't confirm that, but that is probably my belief at this point, that there was probably some mental health issues uh, just by the way, you know, it sounds like the situation went down the way he was acting. But I'm only assuming at this point. Is there an age gap for the suspect or anything like that? Not what age? Uh, let's see, probably 50-ish, 50-ish white male. That's about all I can tell you. Is there any history with the home the roommate in this area that you guys have before? Uh, he has uh, he has a couple of uh, charges in his in his history. I think it's been a while since he's he's had anything. Um, I think one of the charges in his past was uh, was actually pointing and presenting a firearm. So, um, but I think that was some time ago. Have you ever been called um, this house for a situation between I would I would have to check on that. Um, some some names that I heard sounded kind of familiar on my way up here, but I'd have we'd have to go back and look at some uh, documentation to see if it was actually this residence or a, another location. Uh, at this point, uh, that probably remains to be seen. And of course, if they do, we'll, we'll let SLED handle all that as well. Oh, um, who made the 911 call? The roommate. The roommate. Yep. And you said that you guys were, you guys were calling your for a Yeah, it started out as a domestic call. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, think it's that kind of situation, but it was uh, a roommate situation. But uh, with the call that came out, it sounded like it was a domestic type situation at first, and then it, and then it evolved into a uh, well-being type call, checking on the, the well-being of the individual that we unfortunately had to engage. So as far as I know. Male, I believe. Neighbors around. This is actually went on for probably at least 20 minutes or so. So at that point, I think uh, there had been some ne maybe neighbors come out, some spectators uh, that had kind of come out. I guess you know, seeing what's going on, that kind of thing. So uh, there, so there was a few people that saw the incident go go down. So. Well. Uh, yeah, suspect had a gun, so you know, shooting and he shot off one round. So certainly, that round's got to go somewhere. So it could have been, you know, uh, potentially dangerous for anybody that was within that area over the past few minutes. And I will say too, this is actually a very quiet area. This area in particular, uh, there's a there's a couple of homes right here that you know we have responded to for domestic type incidents and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's relatively peaceful here. So. Uh, kind of unusual for this area. That's about all I got, folks. Um, from here, yes, sir. Uh, initially, initially, two two deputies that were responded. Uh, responding officer and a backup officer went from there. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, as far as I know, yeah, I don't know the I don't know the condition of the suspect. Okay. So, yeah. Body cameras? Uh, potentially, yeah. The uniform patrol officers that were here did have body cameras. Uh, I know some uh, detectives also responded to the uh, location also because they were close by and they assisted. And uh, but I know uniform patrol has body cameras. So. Uh, potentially, how many people would have seen that moment uh, with the body cameras? I, I don't know because as they were setting up the perimeter, I don't know how far how far out they were on the perimeter, so. You could put a, a number to how many deputies are involved in this particular case right now? Uh, there's probably six to eight on scene. Yeah, but I just, you know, like I said, they're all around the property at once, so that remains to be seen, and of course we'll have to uh, try to, you know, figure out their point of view and all that. All right, thank y'all.